Another reason why it feels like everybody has more money than you is because they are cheating and you don't even know about it. Instead of living below the means on their salary, they are upscaling their lifestyle and funding it with a side hustle. Now I don't know about you, but it seems like people have a lot more money than I do. They sure are spending a lot more money than me. And on social media, they're not only getting richer, but they're getting younger. So here are my seven reasons why people seem to have more money than you. But before we do that, we're gonna go into a couple of reasons why they do actually have more money than you. Here we go. They do indeed have more money than you. So the least likely reason why they seem to have more money than you is actually they are rich and they are wealthy. That car, that house, those nice shoes are all paid for by their assets or their investments. They don't need to work for money. They have worked out how to get money to work for them. That is, they don't need to work and they have their assets cover their lifestyle. So the more plausible answer is that they actually fall into the other bracket, the 95%, which are not independently wealthy and not rich. But if they did fall in the 5%, and they were generally financially independent, there could be any number of reasons for this. It could be a family inheritance, capitalizing on their skill set, becoming a self-made millionaire, or even a lucky lottery windfall. We just don't know. But as we'll shortly discover, there could be any number of reasons why they seem to have more money than you. And most of those reasons may surprise you. You don't know the cost. Now this is relevant to the high earners and their high achievers that have a very high salary, individuals that have a rich lifestyle and plenty of money but there's a high cost. They are married to the job, working six to seven days a week and doing everything the company demands. Working evenings, working weekends, picking up the pieces when things go south and ensuring the shareholders get a good return for their money. The trade-offs of that high salary are huge, impacting their private life massively. In fact, they probably haven't got much of a life at all. Little or no time at all to enjoy the money or the lifestyle it provides. Everything is done for them. Cook, cleaner, house and garden maintenance, personal shopper, personal assistant, you get the picture. So having a high salary and the money to buy everything you could desire sounds great, but having no time and no life to enjoy it doesn't sound so good. Now they may have more money than you, but I'm willing to bet they'd be envious of your life and your time you have to spend. Given the trade-off of your time and your life for that high salary, I would question whether it was worth it at all. And who knows, perhaps most of those individuals come to the same conclusion themselves. Thank you for clicking on the video today. I hope you find it a great one. Subscribe below, and if you can give me a thumbs up, I appreciate it. They don't have more money, they're trapped. So it's more likely that people don't have more money than you. They just project an image of success and happiness, and it's not real. More importantly, it's not sustainable. This is called the consumer trap, and this is where people spend the money on their wants and not their needs. A bigger house, a flasher car, more clothes. They look great, they feel great. Their confidence is off the scale. They feel successful and they feel like they've made it, but they are living above their means. They're not saving, they're not investing, and they're spending so much money that they're dipping into credit each month that's getting deeper and deeper. As their extravagant spending builds up bad credit, their bills build up, and so does the maintenance cost to their lives. Eventually, all that spending and bad credit mounting hits a pinnacle and it all comes crashing down, and drastic action is needed to get out of the trap. At best, years of paying off huge credit card bills and loans lie ahead, inflated by double digit interest charges that compound every month. This usually means taking extra hours at work or even getting a part-time job to help pay for the bills. And all this time, you're not enjoying any lifestyle at all. So don't be too envious of these people. Building up huge bad credit will eventually have to be paid off and it's no life at all. It's just a fantasy. And if the stress of their financial worries get on top of them, their physical and mental well-being may be affected, adding another layer to complicate matters. So the consumer trap is very real. And although we see the drama on Black Friday and Christmas shopping, it's a year-round event and it attracts the majority of the population. Don't be one of them. The consumer trap is a broke lifestyle and it's a fake one too, designed to take all your money away. It's really nothing to be envious at all. Don't fall for social media. Now that brings us nicely onto social media. And my advice is drop it, or at least have it in very short bursts. The problem I have with that is it's just showing off. It's literally people saying, look at me and my perfect life. It's another exotic vacation, a new mansion, a very expensive watch or an outfit. And it goes on and on, swipe after swipe. No wonder you feel left behind. And it's literally designed that way. You don't see the credit card bills, the loans, the debt that they are incurring. You only see the best bits, the amazing things that they are doing or that they have. That expensive car could just be a hire car for the day. They could be living on beans and paying for a nice outfit to reflect a successful lifestyle. 
Watching people being consumers of liabilities that encourage bad financial habits is not what you need. Instead, follow inspiring, positive people. They're easy to spot. They're not showing off their lifestyle and they're encouraging you to be your best. They will try to lift you up with motivation and discipline. They'll encourage you to invest into assets and avoid the liabilities. And they won't encourage you to live above your means. In fact, they'll encourage you to do the exact opposite because this is excellent financial advice. I find social media to be an excellent reflection of society. 95% of people being broke, trying to look rich, and 5% of people looking broke actually are rich. Paycheck to paycheck. In most cases, the people you see on social media and indeed the people around you are probably living paycheck to paycheck. At least 70% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. They are spending all of their income each month without saving, investing, or even thinking about their financial future. They have no financial plan. And yet every financial advisor will tell you, you need to live below your means to become financially independent and follow that plan. Essentially, you must spend less than you earn every month. And if you don't earn enough, you must do one of two things. The first thing is an exercise in lowering your expenses. The second thing is to increase your income. And for those who really want to target financial independence, you can do both. But living below your means is made much easier by practicing delayed gratification. Delay your financial reward. Save and invest first. Let your assets pay for your lifestyle. Even when your investments grow and you have enough to treat yourself to that car or that new house, delayed gratification. Wait till you have all your bases covered and the income from your assets is enough to pay for everything. Then you can go buy that treat with the profits from your investment. But most importantly, your principal remains and grows again. Delayed gratification will help you build your wealth quicker, but most importantly, it will get you out of the consumer trap. It will encourage you to stop buying stuff and stop wasting money on things you don't need. People live paycheck to paycheck because they don't practice delayed gratification. They spend the principal and usually some credit on top. And it's almost always for stuff they don't need. Don't be part of that broke crowd. Delay, save, invest, and enjoy. The other route leads to bad credit and stress. Avoid it. Upward comparison. There is a quote that states, the only competition worthy of a wise man is with himself. Bear that in mind when you're comparing yourself with people that are far along their financial plan than you are. Now the problem here is we can tend to compare ourselves with people in much higher social standing than us or with a bigger income. This upward comparison does nothing but make us feel behind and feel bad about our circumstances. Instead of that, we should be uplifted on how far we've come and excited about where our efforts will bring us in the future. Upward comparison can leave us feeling demotivated and down. An easy way I found around this is to compare myself with myself. But yesterday or last month or last year, compare yourself to where you've come from, how far you've come and how much action you've taken in pursuit of your goals. Compare the effort you've put in and the gains you've made on your investments and in your confidence. Comparing yourself with those above you is a futile endeavor and it only goes to solidify those feelings that people have more money than you. You are better than that and you are improving all the time. Give yourself a well-deserved break. And by comparing yourself with yourself, you may even boost your growth and your gains by having that bit of competition with you of the past. I find this to be a great strategy and it helps me keep up a solid effort in all of our work and our investments. Extra source of income. Another reason why it feels like everybody has more money than you is because they're cheating and you don't even know about it. Instead of living below the means on their salary, they are upscaling their lifestyle and funding it with a side hustle. That's right. While everybody's enjoying their downtime on the evenings and weekends, some have developed another source of income and are using it to fund their rich lifestyle. It could be an online business or a local service, or they've managed to leverage their expert knowledge. According to Bankrate, 39% of Americans have developed an additional income of $800 a month. And in most cases, those funds have been enjoyed rather than paid bills. They're funding a rich lifestyle while their regular income covers their living costs. So while some people seem to have more money than you, it's simply because they're working more hours than you. Unfair advantage. I think most of us can agree that life isn't fair and that some of us have an unfair advantage over the rest of us. It could be the family or society we were born into, the way we were educated and raised, perhaps even your looks and your body composition that put you ahead of everybody else. It's a true fact that having an unfair advantage over the rest can allow your earning potential to be sent to the moon. Here in North America, like many countries, I believe anybody with a realistic plan, some hard work and determination can achieve their personal and financial goals. But everyone will begin at their own pace, based on their effort and their advantages, if any. 
So I may have an easier path to riches, as they know and socialise with rich and influential people. Some may have to grind year after year, learning from mistakes and becoming better, doing it the old fashioned way. Success and achieving your goals is relative. It's relative to your action, your direction and your circumstances. If you have an advantage, exploit it and make it count. You haven't defined success. This last point may be the most important as it's a starting point. If you really want to succeed and feel like you're making more money than everybody else, you need to set parameters as a starting point. You need to define what success is for you. Let me ask you this. How much money do you need to achieve your financial goals? And do you know what these goals are specifically? Now, this is not a trick question. If your goal is to be financially free, you need to know what that looks like for you. Now, for me to be financially free, I have a set amount that will cover our lifestyle expenditures and our investments. Now, personally, I never intend to retire. I love my work as a renovator and plan to do it till I'm 100. But I want to do it on my own terms. I want to work on my properties and enjoy the work every day. Working on my property portfolio full time is my dream job. And that's one of my goals. But having all my assets cover my living expenses is also a financial goal. And I have a set amount assigned for that. And that will be a definition of success for me. I have other goals, but I have a clear definition for each one. And if you define your success by watching others and judging what they have, you are missing the point completely. Eventually, you could get bitter and envious rather than focus on your success and your efforts. Defining it for yourself and for different levels of growth is key to achieving your financial goals. Planning and execution with determined action will win the day and then people will be jealous of you. Little did they know you felt the same, but you did something about it. So those are the nine reasons why it feels like other people got more money than you. Are there others there that you would have included? Like me, does social media make things feel out of reach? Have you sat down and defined success for you? And what does that look like? Thank you so much for watching today. I appreciate you. My next video will be here in a few days, but in the meantime, I've got a video in here on how saving $10,000 makes everything change. You should check it out. I'll see you there.